Welcome to Bok Talk, Draper City Police Department's Crime Prevention Neighborhood Watch twist on a TED Talk. Bok Talk is victim, officer, criminal talk. We're going to get into the inside of a criminal's mind. Today's guest is Jared Eccleson. Jared is 37 years old and he's going to give us some very interesting insight on crime prevention. This is Jared's story. For me, my early childhood, um, I would say up until the age of three, uh, I grew up in a family of addicts. My mom was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. Uh, my dad, from what my sisters told me of stories, a uh, very, very angry person, very mean person. My early childhood, I don't remember it, thank God, but it was rough. It was, it was full of addiction and full of abuse. I mean, I think my early childhood shaped the rest of my life. I went into foster care. I went through a few foster families. And I remember the day that I met my new parents. Um, I was four years old and I got adopted. I would go into my neighbor's garages at the age of seven, eight years old, steal stuff out of their garage. I always would come home and tell my mom that I found it um, in the street or on the sidewalk or something and they caught on pretty quick that uh, I wasn't finding things, that I was actually stealing things. And, and um, for me, that was, that was my first addiction, was stealing stuff. So once I became a teenager into junior high school, uh, it was really all about my friends and, and getting high and, and, um, and the crime. And um, for me, my progression, just it just progressed. If I was smoking weed, well, the next week I was selling weed. Um, if I was trying mushrooms, well, the next week I was doing uh, crystal meth. It was just all about uh, the people that I was around and, and trying to you know, put on a, a, a persona to where you know, I, I'm trusted in this circle of, of friends and negativity. The draw to keep me into doing things that were illegal uh, was the crowd that I was hanging out with. Um, the individuals, I, I, liked, I liked the lifestyle. Um, I liked, uh, you know, the adrenaline I got from doing these things. Getting high through my high school years uh, was just an everyday, it was just an everyday thing. Um, I would cover it up with, whether it was the marijuana smell, I'd cover it up with spray, whether it was the red eyes, I'd use some Visine, um, or whether it was the meth, I would just stay away from the people that, that could pull my covers. Uh, and I just continued to surround myself with the people that, that were doing the things that I enjoyed doing. So if I could go back and change, uh, and change some steps to, to become a different Jared, um, I think the first thing that I would do is I would have held on to my family a lot closer and I would have realized how much love and support they had to offer that was true love and support. Um, you know, rather than turn to my friends and, and pretty much tell my parents to get lost, which I've done numerous times throughout my childhood, um, I would have realized how much support and love that someone needs to be in successful in life. Uh, you can't do it alone. I didn't I didn't understand how important it was to have that family. And I pushed them away on numerous occasions. Had I grown closer to my family and accepted their support and, tr and been more of a, a family team player, I wouldn't be sitting in the place I was sitting. The biggest red flag when, when, uh, when your kids aren't coming home on time, when uh, their grades are slipping, when um, you know, they're wearing hoodies in summertime, uh, when they're sneaking out at night. I mean, there's more to it than they just want to go run the neighborhood. Uh, my advice to parents would be, uh, you know, watch the friends that, that, your, that your child's hanging around with. Um, you can obviously see it's like a light switch. I know at least for me, it was a light switch. It was, all of a sudden my attitude would change. Um, I was snappy, I was short, I didn't want to spend time with my parents. Uh, if you see these things going on, I mean, you need to intervene. You have to put your foot down because there's more to it than a bad attitude. There's, there's more to it than, oh, I had a bad day at school. Uh, you know, if that distance starts to become a problem and, and, and you're not the same well-knit family that you used to be last week or, or yesterday, then step in and find out what's going on. Ask questions. 